Coach, postseason finally here, regular season came to an end, not the way you wanted it, but what did the regular season do to set up postseason play for you? I mean, you know, I think we got a lot of experience um, out of out of the regular season. I mean, even starting back to our non-conference play of just playing um, some back-to-back -back games um, that hopefully we'll get to do in the conference tournament. Um, I think we played a lot of different styles. Um, we, we went to overtimes, you know, we came down to last second um, possessions. Um, and, and just um, even just making adjustments of, of, of teams that we have beaten um, and teams that we haven't beaten, you know, of just trying to, to figure out new game plans for those. So I think we're very prepared. I think that, um, you know, we did a lot of really good things in, in uh, the regular season, and we're excited to, to have a new season upon us. As postseason now begins, you look forward to potential post post mm -hmm. twelve season. How does that make you feel that you've got you've you started in Greece, <coughs> you set it up, and everything is is proceeding and going along as you per, as you planned? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I feel like. You know, obviously we've talked about this a lot, but that this is, uh, we're in a building process that we are um, certainly trying to get to the postseason. Um, you know, what I like most about um, this week is that we're in control of our own destiny. Um, you know, I've told our kids already that we don't want to leave it up to a committee to decide where we play or what we play in the postseason. And, and we actually um, are very much in control of that, um, starting with Thursday. So um, I'm excited for our kids to have – the opportunity to play in March, um, and they can play deep in March. And, and um, you know, I think Thursday's the first step. Finally for me, what's the uh, up, in, injury updates and get us caught up of what's going on with the team so far? Yeah, um, everybody is, is somewhat healthy. Um, Bryn's got some minutes in um, against Iowa State. That was, that was good for her to be able to be confident on her knee. Um, you know, she is day-to-day -day and, and um, hopefully can, can push through this season. Um, you know, Kat is coming off of a, a, a few just being banged up. Um, but I, I feel like she will be um, good to go on Thursday. And everybody else seems to be pretty healthy. So um, we seem to be in a really good spot. I mean, this week will be about preparing for K-State um, and also preparing our bodies for um, a, a long run. Coach, what's kind of been the message to the uh, underclass <coughs> going into the tournament? Like, are they feeling nervous at all for their like first co like postseason collegiate tournament? Um, you know, I'm sure everybody's a little nervous um, because it's exciting, right? I think that um, butterflies are, are a great thing because it means you care about things. And um, I, I think our kids are excited about it. I don't think our, our freshmen really know what to expect, but I think our seniors are, are trying to um, lay the foundation of, of a, you know, this is another game. It's on a neutral site. Um, it's an opportunity for us to um, be in control of our own destiny and and to extend our season. And so I think that everybody's really excited about the opportunity. And um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure everybody will have a few nerves on Thursday. And then obviously you have Katie Farrell kind of <clears throat> showing her defensive presence lately, as like the team as a whole. Like, what does that mean going into Kansas State, like a team that has a couple good scores? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think our defense needs to continue to get better, obviously, but I do think that we've come a long way since the beginning of the season. Um, I think Katie Farrell is leading the charge with just protecting the paint for us, and, and she's playing, I think, a lot bigger than she really is. Um, I think that our guards are, are defending better on the ball, and, and we will have to defend the three ball really well against K-State, um, along with um, keeping them off the free throw line because they, they got to the free throw line a lot the last time we played them. So um, now's the time that our defense definitely needs to travel, and um, we need to, really, need to really lock down and make it very difficult for our opponents to score. Coach, what challenges come with trying to beat a team three times in one season? I think the biggest thing is that, um, you know, K-State can look back at what they did and, and know that they need to tweak some things. Whereas when you win, I think sometimes you get not complacent, but you're like, I don't have to fix something that's not broke and, until it's broken in the third game, right? So I, I feel like we have to just really scour the last couple of games that K-State has played and to see what they are doing differently um, because they're playing really well. I mean, they, they scored a lot of points against OU. They came back from a large deficit. Um, you know, they beat Iowa State, um, and they've, they've got some good wins. 
And so, so we've got to go back and just kind of look at their lineups and see if they're playing different people, um, if they're guarding differently, and if they're attacking things differently offensively. But, um, but I do think that's the biggest challenge is, is just making sure that as a staff we really leave no stone unturned of, of what are they doing differently that, that we need to prepare for. And you've talked in the past about just Bailey and her, the winning she did in, in high school. How can that sort of postseason success and just confidence translate uh, into her first collegiate experience? Yeah, I think she knows better than a lot of kids on our team just about um, what postseason is like. I mean, it's do or die. It's you've got to be playing your best basketball and you've got to leave it all out on the court. Um, you know, she's such a competitor and such a winner that that I know that she'll be prepared for this. I mean, most competitors do. I mean, they live for these moments and and. Um, Anybody that, that keeps up with basketball, which I would hope that all 14 kids in our locker room do, know that March Madness is, um, is a great thing to be a part of, and, and we want to be right in the thick of things. So I think um, just their mentality of understanding um, that, that their season can end at any moment now, that urgency kind of locks in a little bit. Coach? Uh, Coach Rossi Zalong, you mentioned about growing with the offense, you know, being patient with the shot selection and stuff. Just curious from now, from November to now, how have you guys grown in your offensive messages and schemes? Yeah, I think that our offensive efficiency has been t lots, lots better. Um, and I think you've heard people talk about that um, our offensive efficiency is um, – is, is at the top of, of the conference really. And, and I think, you know, I think we do hold on to the ball a little bit longer than most people in our conference, but it's because of the makeup of our team right now. You know, I think that we've got some veterans that can really score the ball and we've got some young kids that can as well. But at the same time, um, we've got to take good shots. And a lot of that is, is for our defensive end, you know, for our transition defense to be able to set it up um, and that we're not surprised by shots that we're taking. But I think when you see us really execute and show great patience and and wait for um, wait for a great shot compared to a good shot. Um, our our success is so much better at the end of the game. And kind of going off of Stephen's question with the you know the urgency uh, for those five seniors, have you kind of spoken to them or gathered them up together and have a different message for them because you know it's a final chapter for a lot of them. Yeah, um, you know we actually haven't even met with the, the girls yet. Um, we we had a day off yesterday. We met as a staff and got our our. our you know, ducks in a row for the week. And uh, we're going to meet with them today. And um, the message is going to be um, for the entire team. And that's, um, you know, they got to take advantage of the opportunities that they had to play together. Um, you know, these these freshmen love these seniors a lot. And, and I would say that, you know, across the board. And <clears throat> I think that's the message that I've been trying to portray to them all year long is that you never know when the team is going to do some great special things. And so you really want to take advantage of all of that because um, this might be, you know, the best team that um, that these girls play on or we may have the most success um, depending on what we do in this tournament. And so they just want to embrace it. You know, I don't think they want to – I don't think they want to put the pressure on themselves of, oh, this could be the last – the last go around, like, I think it's kind of like Big Cat said in, in her interview, you know, she's, you can't be sad that it's about to end. You've got to be so glad that it happened and just hang on to it for as long as you can. So I hope they just enjoy it and embrace the process and, and, uh, and just play, you know, and, ref and, and, and not even think about it coming to an end. They say you want to play your best basketball in March. Is there any facet of your game right now in particular that you feel like your team is kind of firing on all cylinders on at the perfect time? Um, you know, I think that, that, I do feel like that our all of our kids have kind of gone through a moment this year. I think they've all kind of had their moment of slump, if you will, you know, maybe a bad shooting game or a couple of games or defensively or whatever that might be. And I do feel like they've all been through that, and I think now they're all coming together. Um, I really think their their unity in the locker room has been fantastic. And, and even just the some of the kids that haven't gotten to play um, – a lot in the past that are playing more minutes now, you know, the, the sagas and, and Ashley Chevalier and, um, you know, some of those kids, they're really understanding their value and what they, what their roles bring to this team. And, um, sometimes it's, they need to be utilized for a lot of minutes and sometimes it's, it's, you know, their minutes are, are fewer, but I think they really are <clears throat> embracing the fact that it's, it's, it's a process and it's, it's they're trusting um, the game plan. They're trusting um, their teammates, and and they're just 
anxious to help whenever they can. So um, I don't know that there's one particular spot, except that I do think that our, our unity and our, our roles are, are really been defined as of late. Uh, the conference schedule in and of itself is a grind, going from one game to potentially <coughs> playing another one against the number one seed just 20 hours later. Mm -hmm. What's it like preparing for round one to round two, and especially maybe for freshmen who are like you've talked about a lot, kind of going through that grind of getting ready for March basketball. Yeah, I uh, the, the, the good thing about playing in the conference tournament is that we've played all of these teams twice. So the prep for each game will be very much um, of a – you know, going back and, and, and reviewing, um, just reminding them, lots of film. I mean, you can't spend a lot of time on the court, obviously, when you, you play somebody less than 20 hours later. Um, part of the reason why we put together the schedule that we did, where we played, you know, back-to-back -back games at, at the WNIT and back-to-back -back games at, at Las Vegas, that our kids figured out how to prep like that in a short turnaround, and those were against teams that they knew nothing about. So I do think that our kids are prepared for that and um, that, you know, this is actually the best time to, to play basketball because, you know, from a player's point of view, it's just practice, right? So they're ready to play games, you know? So it's just like games, 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 games. So so let's get on a roll and play as many games as we can here back to back. Does it kind of help even too some of the freshmen who are maybe a little bit